morning. Morning everyone. <laughs> It's a beautiful one today. Um, there's actual real warmth in the sun this morning, which is very, very exciting. Um, we've just uh, we've just been away last week. We went to Lanzarote, actually, which, as a former geography teacher, I found completely fascinating. It's like having a textbook with the with the volcanoes and um, lava flows it was just it was just an amazing place um, lots of sun and sea and sand um, so Jason and I and the kids we just had a really nice very short break luckily all our planes were behaving because we were with EasyJet but they didn't get cancelled so that was even better hope you guys are all sorry it's a bit glitchy this morning Got a lot of horses in at the moment. Oh, I'm going to get squished by her. Um, and where <laughs> you get moving, Jace. When when Jason rode, I think he showed Sassy before on eleven o'clock live, and she's a Morgan. And there was a real people loved seeing a Morgan. So she was bred in this country. And as you can see, she is a bit of a live wire. She's called Sassy, probably with good reason. And she had four weeks with us for starting. She went home for two weeks and she came back yesterday. So she's probably had oh, about 15 rides in total. Um, I think she's probably just turned four. And Jason rode her yesterday and she was good, but she's quite hot. As you can see, she wants to get going. So he's just letting her get rid of a little bit of energy. And for her and him, he's got a polo cross racket, just giving a little bit of focus to the ride. And we don't expect our, the horses that come for starting to go and become polo cross horses, but just teaching them to accept a racket and a ball and the rider moving around on them is just a really great desensitizing technique and desensitizing ex exercises. They're not going to worry about flowers at the side of the dressage arena and things like that if they can uh, cope with this. So Sassy's owned by uh, a very long time client of ours called Annie and I think she bought her as a I don't know maybe even a yearling actually I should have bought her breeding down because it's quite interesting so people who are who like Morgans love Morgans and they're quite obsessed with their breeding and things like that and I think in America you can get trotting like tr trotting Morgans I'm not I'm not entirely sure, but she's a nice little horse. She's probably about 15 hands, maybe 15 one. And as you can see now, she's just starting to calm down a little bit. She's got rid of all that excess energy and she's just starting to get a little bit of rhythm to her trot. And Jason just popping the ball out in front of her, gives her a little bit of focus, gives him a, a purpose of where to go. And usually um, over the winter months, you've seen him do this kind of thing in the arena. But now the ground's dried up and this area down here is just a brilliant place to train horses. It's actually a polycross pitch, which gets sanded each year. So it's, uh, the going's really good. And you might have noticed that in the background, we have Berry the dog, also a bit of a desensitizing tool. Young horses go away very used to dogs. And you might just see in the background, there's our daughter's pony, Froggit, in the rug and our polo cross horses, not really caring what goes on. But right from the outset, Jason's not afraid to sort of 
take the young horses out in open fields where there are other horses, other distractions, other things going on. And just in a quiet way, they just get used to it. Also over there, you probably can't see her, but by the Oast House, the big bay mare. She's our, she's our surrogate mare. She's got an embryo from one of our mares um, by our Australian stock horse stallion, Hayden Oracle. And she is due this week or next week. So she l is literally about to pop. She's enormous. So I'm really hoping, oh, I don't want to jinx it, but in a week or two, we might be able to go and check out a, a new arrival um, in the in the Tuesday check-in. So this might be a bit tricky getting Jason on uh, camera today because uh, little Sassy is not, she's not a fan of standing still at the moment. Exactly the name, but you can see with this, with Polycross, it's a, it adds a bit of um, purpose to your circles. So you can see I'm doing loads of circles and I'm doing that just to control her speed because she's, um, she's quite a feisty little character. So we just want to get her to find some rhythm. And while we're doing that, I've obviously had to do some desensitizing to get to this point. So she's used to a stick and ball, open field, you know, all of which she's capable of doing. But obviously when you come out into an open field, there's so many more distractions. So my focus is on a little bit of rhythm. And I'm also looking for some shoulder control. So I'm bringing in the outside rain a little bit and just looking for those little moments when she's falling out of the circle that she sort of shifts the shoulder in back in line with her body or in the direction I'm sort of pointing her nose. And I'm just playing with little tiny um, changes like that as I'm going around. And I try to ignore everything else. <laughs> so Sassy actually, right from the start, she's never done anything um, wrong really. She's never sort of bucked or, you know, rushed or anything like that but she is hot. So um, the handover with Annie next week, um, you know, she's, she's, she's not a, you know, she's not a worried horse. She's not a nervous horse. She just wants to go places. So she just needs to find uh, techniques to relax and just let her come down and just slow that rhythm. And that will all come with the experience as well. Yeah, so Jason just said a quiet horse, um, like a truly quiet and accepting horse, um, has to be quiet when there's a lot of movement going on. So you can think you've got a really quiet horse when you're sort of walking and trotting or you're in the arena where everything's um, what's managed. But that quiet horse has to be able to deal with, well, things like this. You know, loads of stuff going on. I don't know if you can hear in the background. We've got um, Dave's harrowing the fields next door. <laughs> you can just see in the background there. So there is lots to do, lots to, lots to look at for her. And as I said, this is only her second ride back in after she's had a break. There's a little black line for the side of the polar cross pitch there. You might have seen her just have a little look at it and really step over. Look, she might do it again. Oh no, she didn't do it so much that time. <laughs> so she's just, she's one of those horses. She will notice things and she'll have, not like big spooks, but she will have a little look at things and that will all settle down as she gets more rides under her belt. As I said at the beginning, this is probably her, I don't know, 15th, ooh, losing him, 15th or 16th ride. Just been on a two week break. Lovely. And actually, Sassy is quite a good size for a polar cross pony, actually. Not that she's, you know, Annie, well, Annie has had a go on camps and things. 
Um, but this does look quite funny when Jason's doing this on sort of 17 hand warm bloods. Um, but you know, if, as I said at the beginning, if they can cope with this, they can cope with the rider moving around on them. You know, we get a lot of horses sent to us who have been started or, you know, youngsters, actually even horses that are a little bit older that have a real rush in them. They have like a, still have a bit of a fear of the rider and it's all fine when, they're, when the rider's sitting very quietly and not moving. And then if something shifts the rider or they get unbalanced, their horse rushes or even bolts. So, you know, if from the outset when, they, when they're started under saddle, they, they accept, you know, Jason doing this with the racket and things like that, then, um, you know, there's, there's not going to be that problem. They're going to be fully accepting of the rider, whatever they're doing on top. You can see Jason's in his stock saddle at the moment. She'll, Sassy will go into her saddle probably tomorrow. Yep. Um, he just wants to start them off after a break in his saddle, just in case they're a little bit uh, yee-haw after their, after their break. So she'll go into all her tack tomorrow. And as I said, well, there'll be the handovers with Annie next week. And actually, that is a point. Nancy's just saying I love riding one-handed. And that that's another thing. Um, you know, getting them used to stuff like that. There's nothing worse than trying to negotiate a gait and things. If you, you know, if you've got one hand on the reins and one hand doing something else and you can't control your horse. So, yeah. So... In all, Sassy's having to cope with a lot. I'm just looking through some of the comments. Oh, Sally Ann, oh, Sassy is the half sister to mine. Oh, brilliant. Oh. Cool. That's a nice little ride, Jace, in the yeah. sun. Right. This is this is this is what makes my job fun. This <laughs> a little bit of sport, a little bit of sort of cruising around in the sunshine. And you can see as she's starting to go through, I'm changing directions a little bit. I and mean, sometimes I'm thinking out here, once horse gets to a certain stage in their training, you start to think a little bit in opposites. So if a horse really wants to go, um, then, well, actually the horse really wants to go, I go with them. But when they're thinking about going left or right, she wants to look at the tractor. And they're thinking about going to the left and I'll be sort of steering to the right and it just helps them to start to think about what you what you want and start to follow your aids a little bit more rather than just thinking well I'm just going to go this way. It is a good idea in the beginning to go with your horse a little bit just to get on side with them but then you want um, you want to get them to start following you a little bit more so that sort of slightly passive takeover from our end and um, get them to start following you along. So that's sort of what I'm working on now. Cool. Cool. All yeah. right. Well, hopefully, as I said, maybe next week or, you know, in the next two or three weeks, I'm really hoping we're going to have a little foal to show you. So that would be nice. And, um, yeah, Sassy's done really well there. We'll, uh, we'll catch up with you next Tuesday. And, um, yeah, take care. Have a lovely day wherever you are. Cheers. Bye.